So today's important meat topic is going to be mechanism of muscle contraction, which is a very important topic for our examination. So let's talk about mechanism of muscle contraction. So there are two effectants which are helically bound together, which are two in number. But just imagine one of the wire is made up of lot of G actins. For example, if I have to draw these beads, these are made up of G actins. Motor neuron and the sarcolemma of the muscle fibers are called as what? Neuromuscular junction, otherwise called as motor end plate. <laughs> If you want to move your hands or if you want to move from one location to another location, muscle contraction plays a very important role. So today's important meat topic is going to be mechanism of muscle contraction, which is a very important topic for our examination. So let's talk about mechanism of muscle contraction. So before going in for this, we have to understand there are two contractile protein. One is called as an actin. The second one is called as a myosin. First, we'll start off studying actin which is called as a thin filament. This is very important. It's called as a thin filament. And this actin is a polymeric protein. So it is made up of many monomers. So actin is going to be a polymer, which means they are made up of many monomers. So what is that monomer going to be? So that monomer is going to be something called as F actins. So how many F actins are present? There are two F actins. Just imagine there are two wires. So we are going to coil two wires together. So one wire is going to be an F actin, the other wire is going to be an F actin. So both are going to be intertwined together. So this is going to be what? The F actins. So there are two F actins which are helically bound together, which are two in number. But just imagine one of the wire is made up of lot of G actins. For example, if I have to draw these beads, these are made up of G actins. So, F actins are exactly made up of G actins. So, G actin is referring to globular actin, which are spherical ones. The second type of filamentous protein which we are going to talk about is trophomyosin. Trophomyosin. You can see this trophomyosin will go and bind to the actin, actin part, very specifically F actin. The third one is called as a complex protein. Very important, it's a complex protein. And this complex protein is called as trophonins. So very important line for our examination. Where do you find this trophonins? The trophonins will be present at the regular intervals of trophomyosin. So we can say they are present at the regular interval of of trophomyosins. So there are three components of protein which make up the complete polymer. The first is two F actins which are helically wounded together. The second one is going to be a trophomycin and the third one is going to be trophonin. These three make up what? The complete actin which we call it as a thin filament. Okay. What about this complex protein which I talked about something called as Trophonin. They have three subunits. The first subunit you can see is TT. So the name gives you an idea. So this TT goes and binds to the trophomyosin, the blue color one. So this part goes and binds to the trophomyosin so that they both make a complex. What about TI? This TI goes and binds to the F actins and makes a complex between the actin and the trophomyosin together. The most important part for the examination is going to be TC part. So what does this TC do? This TC is going to go and bind with the calcium. We already know calcium is very important for the muscle contraction. Suppose if the calcium concentration is going to increase in the sarcoplasm of the muscle fiber or the muscle cell, then this TC part has greater affinity to go and bind with the calcium. That plays a very important role. So you just have to remember TC binds with the calcium TT binds with the trophomyosin, whereas TI binds to the actin and makes up an actin trophomyosin complex. So now let's see everything in the form of an image. The small pieces or the beads that you're seeing over here is what? G actins and many G actins combines together make up two F actins which are helically coiled together. 
Then comes, we talked about a filamentous protein, which is the trophomycin. There are true trophomycins, which are also intertwined. And these are going to be trophonins, which are present at the regular intervals of trophomyosins. So we talked about the complete actin part, which is a thin filament. Now we are going to talk about the second important contractile protein, which is a myosin. So myosin is called as what? A thick filament. These two points are very, very important. So if I have to talk about myosin, it is also going to be a polymer, polymeric protein. So which means they are made up of many small, small molecules. These small molecules, these are all going to be monomers. These monomers are called as meromyosin. So there are many meromyosin which will bind together and form the complete thick filament which we call it as what? Myosins. So what if we take one of the meromyosin and study? Okay. So the meromyosin has a head part, very important part and an arm part and then you are seeing here is a tail part. Please remember, very important for the NEET examination. The head and the arm part are made up of heavy meromyosin. Very important for the examination. They are made up of heavy meromyosin. Whereas the tail part is made up of light meromyosin. They are made up of light meromyosin. So we used to write it as what? LMM. So there is going to be head part. So now what are the sites that are exactly present in the meromyosin? There are two important sites which are exactly present here. The first site, which you can see it here in the form of blue color, is called as an actin binding site. Listen carefully, we are talking about myosin. Myosin has to go and fit to the actins. Okay, we'll study in detail. The second one is going to be ATP binding site. Okay, what does this pink part is referring to? This is referring to an enzyme. So that enzyme is called ATPases. We know ATPases is an enzyme. An enzyme will always sub bind with a substrate which is going to be ATP. So to this site, ATP binds. Exactly correct. So we can call the site as ATPases or ATP binding site also. So the top most portion is going to be actin binding site. The bottom most portions are going to be what? The ATP binding site or ATPases. Suppose to understand it more detail, let's understand this is going to be the thin filament. So we'll draw a thin filament and we'll draw the thick filament. So this is the thin filament like this, which is called as an actin part. And let's draw a very thick filament like this. And the thick filament usually has a head on top of it. Listen carefully. Now what's going to happen? Only the actin moves inside. The myosin will always stay in the same place. Understand it very carefully. So here what we have studied, this is a F, F actins which are two in numbers and the trophomyosins are shielded around it and this is the active site, the active site. Usually when the muscles are not contracting, this active site, the trophonin will be bound. So in this site, the trophonin will occupy the active site. So the trophonin will always bind when the muscle is not contracting. Suppose if the muscle starts contracting, then what will happen? the TC part of trophomyosin will go and bind to the calcium. So now the active site is free. They have moved from the location. So now the myosin head can go and fit to the active site which is present in the actin part. So we studied about actin and myosin together. Very important for examination is one myosin is surrounded by six actins. So this is the myosin, this is the myosin and this is the myosin. So one myosin is surrounded by six actins exactly correct remember this point and this is actin or we can say one actin is surrounded by three myosin so remember this point which is very important for need one myosin surrounded by six actin or one actin surrounded by three myosin which is very important for our examination okay now very important you just have to remember lia light band is otherwise called as i band we can also call it isotrophic band and it's an actin band, which is a thin band. The complete part we have seen together. F-actin, trophomyosin and trophonin together. And this you have to remember DAM, which is dark band and isotrophic band. And this is going to be myosin, which is a 
thick filament. For now, we have understood the complete part of the contractile protein, which is myosin and actin. Now, we will understand about the muscles together. Okay. So, we are going to study about the muscle cell. So, the muscle cell is otherwise called as muscle fibers. Understand this point clearly. It is otherwise called as muscle fiber. So, do not get confused with the name muscle fibers and these muscle fibers are going to have a plasma membrane and the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber is called as sarcolemma. These terminologies, I am going to use it a lot. The next one is going to be a cytoplasm. The cytoplasm of the muscle fibers is called as sarcoplasm whereas the endoplasmic reticulum the endoplasmic reticulum inside the muscle cell or the muscle fiber is called as sarcoplasmic reticulum and this sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to be the storage house of calcium it is going to be the storage house of calcium ions usually the calcium ions will be present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum only if the muscle cells are going to receive impulses the calcium will be released out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum so this is a cell we are talking about inside these cell if we have to talk about there is going to be myofibrils or myofilaments myofilaments and these myofilaments contains two proteins just now we have seen. What are the two types of proteins we have seen so far? One is going to be an actin filament. The second one is going to be the myosin filament. I told you to remember actins are going to be a thin filament. Whereas myosins are going to be a thick filament. And remember Leia for this and remember dam for this one okay so for now what we have done we have studied what does a muscle cell has we have to understand how is the arrangement of the filaments or we can say the actin and myosin inside the muscle fibers or cells so first we will start drawing an actin which is a thin filament so these are going to be actins so these are actins this is also going to be actin so we will refer this part as an i band please remember I band is isotrophic band which is made up of what? Actin which is a thin band. R right now we know that part. And how are they held together? They are held together with the help of a thin elastin fibers. There is a thin elastin fibers which holds them together. This thin elastin fiber is going to be called as a Z line. So thin elastin fiber which holds the complete part together and this is a Z line and this is also going to be the Z line. Very important point is we used to say there is a structural and functional unit of a muscle that is called as what sarcomere. So we can see the distance between the Z line is called as sarcomere which is the structural functional unit of the muscle cell or the muscle fibers. If the sarcomere become less, which means the muscle is contracting. If the sarcomere is going to become maximum, which means the muscles are relaxing. Now we will draw the myosin, which is a thick part. So these parts are going to be myosin, which is a thick filament. So this is called as what? A band. A band. And it's made up of myosin. And it's a dark band. And it's a thick band. Okay, so how are they held together? They are also held together by a thin fibrous, thin elastic membrane which is called as M line. You have to remember this line is called as M line. Just see this image. Here you can find an overlapping of the actin and the myosin together. So this is the overlapping part where the actin and myosins are overlapping together. This zone is called as ozone. So here also there is going to be a ozone where there is overlapping part. So this area where I am writing, there is no overlapping of the thin filament or the actin filament over the myosin filament. And this part alone is called as H zone. So the central part, where there is no overlapping of the thin filament over the thick filament 
or there is no overlapping of the actin over the myosin is called as what? H zones. So during contraction, what is going to take place? What are the lines or the bands are going to decrease and what are the bands are going to increase? So first let's start off with writing all the band contraction and the relaxation together. So this is very important for our neat examination. First, we already know the actin filament is going to decrease, which means the I band decreases. So the I band is going to decrease. Just imagine if the I band is going to decrease, then what will happen to Z line? Z line of course decreases. So Z line decreases. If a Z line is decreasing, then what happened to sarcomere? Sarcomere also decreases. But understand carefully, myosin will not move. It remains the same. The thick filament remains the same. So A band remains the same or remains constant or we can say remains same. Whereas the H zone, H zone will also decrease. Why? Because the actin keeps moving inside. So H zone decreases. Whereas the O zone overlapping area increases. So this is very important to study for our NEET examination. All the statement based question comes from this part. Okay. So now we understood. Now we are moving on to the mechanism of muscle contraction. This was explained by a person called Huxley. What does it mean? Which filament keeps moving? The thin filament will slide over the thick filament or I can say the actin will slide over the myosin. So sliding of the thin filament, actin over the myosin filament is going to take place. Myosin doesn't move, only the actin moves. Okay, how is the muscle actually going to contract? So the muscle will be contracting only when the central nervous system, these are motor neurons. The motor neuron is going to send impulses to the muscle cell very importantly this is the muscle cell so we can say the muscle cell and the motor neurons together called as motor unit so what's a motor unit motor unit is going to be motor neuron plus the muscle cell or the muscle fiber now listen carefully there is a very important terminology called as neuromuscular junction. We can write it as N, M, J or motor end plate. What does it mean? The junction between the motor neuron and the sarcolemma. This is the plasma membrane. So plasma membrane of the muscle fiber is called as what? Sarcolemma. So we can say the junction between the motor neuron and the sarcolemma of the muscle fibers are called as what neuromuscular junction otherwise called as motor end plate now we understood when the muscle is going to contract yes so now we'll talk about the complete sequence of muscle contraction so what is happening let's draw there's going to be a motor neuron so this is going to be the motor neuron which is coming from the central nervous system they are actually carrying what action potential inside this there are a lot of synaptic vesicles present. So these are all going to be synaptic vesicle. Inside these synaptic vesicles, there are going to be lot of neurotransmitters. So there are going to be neurotransmitters present. So that neurotransmitter is going to be in this scenario, acetylcholine. This is very, very important, which is acetylcholine. Now listen carefully, in the motor neuron itself, there are some voltage gated channels which are present. So there is going to be a voltage gated channel which we call it calcium voltage gated channel, gated channel and then we know there is going to be a muscle cell. So let's draw the muscle cell. So there is going to be a muscle cell which is exactly present here. So this is going to be what? the muscle cell. This muscle cell is otherwise called as muscle fibers. So this is the muscle fibers. So inside what is going to happen? So they do have some receptors on top of it. These receptors are binding of the acetylcholine. Okay. Now listen carefully. We already studied the junction between the motor neuron and the sarcolemma of the muscle fiber is called as neuromuscular junctions or motor end plate. Now what's happening? 
the neurons are bringing impulses. So as the impulses are coming in the form of an electric charge, what will happen? So this calcium which is present in between or in the synaptic cleft will go inside. As they go inside, what they will do? They will push the synaptic vesicles which contains the neurotransmitters to come and bind to the end part and they start releasing the acetylcholine. Now what will happen? Let's consider this is the acetylcholine. Now the acetylcholine comes and binds to the receptor which is present onto the sarcolemma of the muscle cell. As soon as they bound, what will happen? There is going to be depolarization, depolarization, depolarization where the sodium ions started getting inside. As sodium ions started getting inside, what is happening? Action potential is going to be generated, which means they are giving signal to the muscle to contract. Now the action potential is generated. This action potential travels in this T-tubules part, this part, the inwards protrusions of the plasma membrane. As the action potential goes, it's going to stimulate sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum which is storing the calcium and keeping inside. Now, this sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to release the calcium. Now, they start releasing the calcium from the reticulum where exactly into the into the sarcoplasm which means the cytoplasm. Now what has happened? The calcium ion has increased maximum inside this part. So what will happen? Inside there are a lot of fibers we have seen actin and myosin. Suppose let's consider this is going to be the actin part. This is the actin part which has F actins and the trophomyosins are held together and the trophin is bind here. As soon as the trophin and sees the calcium is maximum here the trophin in PC part has a maximum affinity to come and bind to the calcium because they have maximum affinity. So what will happen? The trophin in PC part, the PC part of trophinins bind with the calcium. They are going to bind with the calcium. So now what will happen? As they go and bind with the calcium, what is happening to the actin? The actin part, the active site becomes free now. So this is the actin. The actin active site has become free. So now who can go and bind? So which means they have unmasked the active site of the actin. Now who can go and bind? Now there is going to be binding of myosin. So now what will happen? The myosin is going to make a cross bridge with the actin. But it's not going to be easily done like this. So if you are drawing this is going to be the actin. And this is going to be the myosin head. So it goes and binds over there because there is an active site. Now what will happen? The actin and the myosin cross bridge has to take place means the ATPase which is present in the myosin head will combine with actin ATP molecule and they undergoes hydrolysis and they produce what ADP plus PI. And whenever they produce ADP plus PI, some amount of energy is released. And this energy is used by this myosin head to go and bind over there and pull the actin inside. So that process we used to call it as power stroke. So as they give a power stroke, which means the myosin head goes and pulls the actin inward. So actin moves in, moves in. So now the contraction started, contraction starts. So when the contraction starts, what will happen? We already know the actin band becomes less. So I band decreases. Whenever a I band decreases, Z line decreases. Whenever a Z line decreases, sarcomere decreases and H zone decreases. Whereas A band will be same. A band remains the same. So this is going to happen in the complete process of muscle contraction. Suppose if the muscle is going for relaxation if you are talking about which means they come back to its original position. That time also what will happen? Another ATP, another molecule of ATP binds to the myosin head and breaks the cross bridge and 
breaks actin myosin bridges so for now what we have studied we have studied the complete process of muscle contraction together now let's see so as soon as the calcium comes what exactly is happening just see this image the trophomycin is unshielding so that this violet color part is the active site of the actin now what will happen the binding of calcium has actually removed the masking site exactly now as soon as the masking site is removed now the myosin has to bind how the atp will go and bind over here with the supply of the energy they are going to go and bind to the active site part now now they have to break the bond again one molecule of atp will come and bind over there and removes the myosin back again which means they are relaxing back again so this process will continue until there is an availability of calcium if calcium gets back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum the contraction is going to stop or we can say the trophonin will go back to the same position also now we have understood the complete process of muscle contraction let's have one question and i'm going to give you a work for you to do which of the following statement is correct or incorrect we have to find a band we called a band as what a band is called as the dark band exactly correct a band is dark band and contain myosin please remember dam dark anisotropic myosin exactly first statement is correct the i band a light band and con and contain actin lia yes light band isotrophic actin exactly correct so this is a correct statement during muscle contraction a band remains same but they have given what contracts so this is a wrong statement we'll keep it as such the part between the two z line is called as what sarcomere exactly correct now the central part of the thick filament which means the central part of the myosin is not overlapped by actin that zone is called as head zone but they have given it just opposite so this is also a wrong statement so what are the statements that are correct 1 2 and 4 are correct so 1 2 4 are correct while third and five are incorrect statements so answer is going to be option number 4 so if you do this kind of question it's going to be very easy for you to solve okay the next question read the statements regarding muscle protein check out the question find an answer and put it in the comment section thank you everybody